come back. Now we've got it fully up and running. There's no problems. I don't think. We'll have to test it. Um, ah. Come through the post. Go tech. So that's pretty cool. So I want for this one, it's got no leg screen and it tells me every track what's on that track. So I get to see what games there is. And also, it's got a nice little dial. I like that. I do like that. But it came with this little USB stick. Absolutely full of games. Awesome. And I got a DVD ROM full of stuff. So that's awesome. But this, it's in there. it sticks out a little a bit too much. I've got a solution to that. A little micro. This is a 16 gig. There you go. Much nicer. Yeah. Initially, I was going to have a double stack. This is on its way out. It's struggling to read discs. Later on, I'm going to take that off, dismantle it, check it. It's probably the capacitors. And then eventually, I want to have it so the GoTech sat up on top on an angle so I can see the screen. I don't want to drill the case and I don't want that down there because if I load games, I'm going to have to lean around it. I don't want to do that. The 3D printed case over it, so it'll look cool. I hope. That's what we're going to do. Now if you remember, I don't know if you remember, you probably couldn't hear me because when I reviewed the video after I'd upload it, I couldn't hear myself either. On the very first video, the sound was naff. Believe it or not, there was a sticker on it. I didn't put it there. That's what I'm sticking to anyway. We're going to go through all this. And I'll show you. Right, so you remember this was where the battery was. It's, this is all corrosion from the battery. You see where I've been scraping some. Now initially, where it says audio filter, I presume this was all the audio filter. So last night, or the night before, night before, I was watching Gadget UK 164. If you haven't seen him you probably have because if you're on my channel you've probably seen his quite an intelligent guy to be fair but he thought the exact same thing i did to do with the audio filter until he discovered it's not this the charge for the battery been messing about with this but yeah so i'm not bothered about that anymore there was one pin 39 and it's the second one so yeah pin 39 and gary no contact between this and that. I'm pretty sure that doesn't go anywhere. Because this is a resistor array. A resistor array. That's a resistor array there. There's a load of resistors in there. And they're all in loops, loop, loop. And they all go to one ground. And then it's covered in ceramic. Resistor array. But it's not used there. And there's quite a few what aren't used on the board. You'll see them scattered around. There's a couple there. One, two. Here, get the schematics out and have a look. And there's um something called oh, yeah. I think it was called Amiga PCB. Brilliant. I'll show you in a minute if I remember. Pin 39 shot over that way. It goes to this here. This is uh, an oscillator crystal. Now it comes down to somewhere down here to one of these jumpers. I think it's jumper two, and this is the via next to the jumper. There's a via one of these three here so yeah i'm going to test that and find out where it goes and figure it out off the schematics and see what i can see right so this is the um amiga pcb explorer i've just been talking about this is the 500 board obviously if you go to zoom you can go right in have a good look this is the board with all the components have been taken off if you just highlight one of the pads you can see that, if I highlight that and I click on it, you see the trace? It tells you where it's going to, to the next component. I want to go to Gary, so I'm just going to drop it down to 75. So Gary, pin 39, is here. And this is the trace which is missing. It goes to resistor array, resistor pack as it's called on here. So we highlight that. Now it tells me to go into the Gary pin 39 and off it goes. So let's follow that. I don't know if it's picking up on camera because it's a blue. It should be yellow really. But yeah, it's the glow where it is. There it is, the oscillating crystal. It goes in there. Comes down. Gone to jumper 2 over here. Which 
Let's see, go. So, jumper two comes down to a via, and then off to the expansion port. See, at the moment it says top top view. So, let's have a look underneath. So, there's Gary, pin 39, resistor array. Now, there's no trace on this resistor array going from this pad. The only trace is on the top side going to pin 39, and this is a trace which is broke. And because that's not used, I ain't gonna bother with that. Now this is the audio filter what we were talking about before. Well, what we thought was the audio filler. It's not the audio filler. It it oh let's get rid of them. We don't want that colour. We don't want that colour. So you can see you got two resistors here. And you've got two diodes here. And the diodes I'm going to the battery. So yeah, this would have been a handy tool like three days ago. And I wouldn't be tracing it by eye. But never mind. So yeah, a handy tool. Amiga PCB Explorer. Bang it in Google, it'll come up. Fossil Force! Fossil Force! Packing peanuts, not big bags, unboxing, and this, jeez I forgot how heavy these weigh, nice, I'll send this packaging back, right then, external floppy, it's in better days, nice little colour, yeah, we got the YouTube pads as well, Let's see if we can get this open, oh, one, two, three, four. This has been opened. Two missing. So you've got these two, which look like tiny wood screws. And two normal screws. And then two missing. Pretty sure it's been opened. It's going to be opened. It's old. That old. Nobody's opened me. Yeah. As you can see, completely different screws. Oh. Yeah, completely different screws. There's not one there, and there's one there. This is a really short threaded one compared to that. Mm. Yeah. Should have tested it first, really, shouldn't I? Yeah. That's for amateurs. Right, when you open these, it's off. When you open these, be careful. You've got a very, very short ribbon cable and a power lead. There we go. Yeah, that's some better days. See what I mean? How short that ribbon cable is. <laughs> I hope this works. Yeah. Floppy drive's not screwed in in the case. It just slides uh, that way. Slides out the front. Just be careful. See? Right, you need to take this top plate off from one side, pop it, pop it, raise it, and it'll come off. And with the face plate, you literally just lift it. Well, you literally just lift up. There's one missing. Should be one of these over here. Yeah. Yeah. 3D print it later, I suppose. It's not in here. Let's get a button off, push the flap in, and just slide the button up. I'm gonna leave that. Last time I took one of them out, I lost the spring. Dog ate it. I ain't got a dog. Right. This out. There's just two screws to take this off. Yeah. And slide the cable gently. That's it. We're ready for cleaning. And then we'll get it back together and test it, I suppose. Which I should have done before. That's a good pub. I'm a bloke. Right. I've scrubbed. I've cleaned. 
It's all spotless. Them friggin' pads on there, the glue on them, Jesus. It took me a good half hour just to scrub. Then th four, three. Mm. I found the leg. Intelligent goggles on. Amazon. Just in time. They're not crayons. Five glass pens. I can't find me a full. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to take fit in there. Should do. Snug as a bug in a rug. So these two cables. Uh, that's definitely not going to reach. That might. Probably not because it's got to go over this side. So. They're in. It's their power lead. From Amiga kit. I knew this would come in handy. Something. Fits. <laughs> as long as I put the cables in the right way. I will attach that. That's part of the experiment. I'll put that there so we don't short I think. Upside down. Alright, bring it down. My go tech is plugged in DF1. You can hear the disk drive ticking about up there. I think it's loading. Yeah, there you go. Workbench. This thing's ticking away. The eject button. As you can see, it's a little bit off. So, that's an old one. That's often an Amiga original. And this is of an external. Massive difference. So, I gotta turn that into that, but still fit that. I'm gonna have to get myself into these things. Right then, let's get designing. Hopefully, next time you see me, we'll have one of them. And 20 minutes later, Let's see if it fits. Of course it'll fit. I wonder if it works. <laughs> works. Right, let's try that. Oh. <laughs> ah. I just love it when it something works. Yes, I know it's white. I'll paint it. Eject! Amondo. <laughs> Sweet. So if you've got any eject buttons that don't fit, I've got a 3D printer. Only 99.99. Sweet. Right, let's put it together. Sort it out. Let's have a play. Who keeps games in bags? Me. <laughs> Springy. Is that Ron? Smoke test. Kicked in. Smoke face. Yeah. Where's the uh, control? Take a Mega Drive. It's my favourite controller. Not now, though. You might get a PS4 controller. I mean, that would be something. And yes, you did see that flop. I haven't screwed the case down. Start a new game. 
hard mode. Ramp run. Okay. Oh no, I know this one. I can't do it. Oh, fall off. You. <clears throat> I beat it. So there you go. External floppy internally. Modified. Go tech externally. DF1. Yeah. Been there all day. Quite enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.